Sometimes my heart is so full that I feel as if there were a burning flame of love within me, so strong that it could consume my whole being. How can I contain these feelings of love? How can I seek moderation in my desire for God? I started St. Luke Productions in 1980 when I was at the Oregon Shakespearean Festival in Ashland on the West Coast. And at that time, I was, uh, had been performing for about six years doing Shakespearean festivals around the country. And I, I was kind of drawn to wanting to do something um, maybe a little more inspirational and deeper on a more spiritual vein. I was an actress when I first met Leonardo and I was working at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, and he started on the road with these live dramas on the Gospel of Luke, and I directed them. And at the time, I wasn't a Catholic. I became a Catholic in 1981, and then we were married in 1983, and went on to have the six children we have now. I was very interested artistically in trying to undertake works that were not normally performed for the theater. So I was very interested in uh, doing the scriptures, and then eventually I added on to that was the lives of the saints. Then taking bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body to be given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Well, how can you define or even portray the personality of Jesus Christ? But the saints are kind of like, in the, say, in this case, St. Francis um, is one aspect of Christ, one element of him, of his personality. So you're able to kind of zero in and hook into that. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving. Sing joyful songs to the Lord. I am the troubadour of the great king. What you do is you um, kind of uh, have to live with it. You live with, with uh, not only the history and the facts, but you live with his words. And you try to put some flesh onto those words. Then you can try to enter into the way they would want to have it said. Our beloved Father Maximilian Maria Kolbe was a man made of flesh and blood like us, yet God gave him the grace to rise above the limits of human nature and conform more fully to the image of Christ, the true high priest and victim. These saints have become my friends, and I, I feel that I know them personally, and they're a part of my life, they're a part of my children's life, and so this has really grown into a real family business, family ministry, and uh, a family work. So we're, we've always done all our shows in conjunction with children. And last summer we spent some time really examining what our goals were. We decided we really wanted to, um, we wanted to do something bigger than what we've done so far. We wanted to do something that involved other people. And we didn't want to we felt we could go on just doing one-person shows, but we wanted to, to grow and provide a place for other people to become involved. And so, on the morning of his departure, he spoke to Madre Teresa and the sisters. My daughters in Christ, did not the Messiah, the Word of God, our beloved, have to undergo all these things so as to enter into his glory. In the making of John of the Cross, um, some of the biggest, the first big challenge for me was to uh, go against the mold, or break the mold of the one person show, uh, which we had always done in our other films. So on the 24th day of February, 1563, he was clothed with the Carmelite habit and took the name of Brother John of St. Matthias. I played all the different characters in period costume, 16th century costume, and then we enhanced around that uh, to create atmosphere extras, uh, 
many of different extras. As a matter of fact, we all have 65 different extras in this film. When we were doing the film of John of the Cross, there were so many aspects of that film that I was involved in with writing the screenplay and uh, planning out all these complicated uh, locations that we were going to. And, and there were just so many elements that I, I didn't have very much time at all to think about the most important thing, which was the role that I was going to be playing. Hi, John. I'm frightened. You, Mother? What could frighten you? I'm not as brave as I look. I've pulled you into this life, and I feel responsible for your well-being. Yes, Mother. There are friars in the order, Fry John, who will stop at nothing to kill the reform. Yes, I know. God permits the devil to blind and delude many. I fear for your very life, Fry John. They see that other friars are following you into the reform movement. I tell you, the war is on. I think John of the Cross is somebody who can help be like a window to uh, another avenue, another plane of, of, uh, of depth and uh, truth that we oftentimes don't take the time to contemplate. Um, so we, is, he's kind of like a, a person that can help us uh, maybe contemplate who we are and who God is and why we're here in the first place. We've recently begun a new live drama on St. Therese of Lisieux. It is impossible for me to grow up, and so I must bear with myself such as I am with all my imperfections. Since I am too small to climb the rough stairway of perfection, I need a means of going to heaven by a little way, a way that is very straight, very short, and totally new. Originally, I had thought that I would play the role of Therese, but I grew up and ended up playing Teresa of Avila instead. <laughs> so, I, so we cast no, another young woman in the role of Therese. We searched through uh, the whole country to find a talented actress to play the role, and we cast a young woman who is now traveling around the country with another young woman and performing this one-woman show on St. Therese of Lisieux. This is an exciting thing for us because now we have two shows on the road at the same time. I wondered for a long time why God has preferences, why all souls don't receive an equal amount of graces, yet all the flowers he has created are beautiful. If they all wanted to be roses, the fields would not be decked out with daisies. So it is with the world of souls. Jesus created great souls comparable to the roses, but he also created little ones who must be content to be daisies. I want to tell the story of a little flower who rejoices at the totally free gifts of Jesus. His mercy alone brought about everything that is good in her. The vision of St. Luke Productions, I, I really hope that it can be a, uh, a place where we can really expand to include many other people not just ourselves. And the reason uh, we mention that um, as a real undertaking, a serious one, is because we see in, the, in our country a real uh, hunger to do something artistically that has a more spiritual base and uh, to do something really beautiful for God, as Mother Teresa of Calcutta would say. When I first started this ministry in 1980, I wrote her in India, and she wrote me back and that was one of her things she, she told me in that letter, encouraging me to do this work. But one of her things is says, do this, do something beautiful for God by doing this work. And so right away when I, uh, when I uh, approached all this work, I thought that's what should be our vision and that should be our focus. What we're trying to do, it's very simple. We want to do something beautiful for God in his presence, but also we want to share that with everyone. Since you know now that your desired beloved lives hidden in your heart, strive to be really hidden within, and 
and you will embrace him within you and experience him with loving affection.